Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Taylor Trujillo with Ticket Force. First, I want to thank you all for attending today's webinar. I am really excited about today's guest. We have Martin Gamletoff, who is the VP of, of Commercial Operations at ActivityStream. Um, we love the ActivityStream product, and our team is working with Martin right now on the interface to provide a seamless experience for all Ticket Force clients. This webinar is uh, filled with fantastic content and a great reminder for venues about the importance of the customer experience. Martin has a background in concert services and ticketing and is passionate about helping venues and organizers turn data into business success and exceptional customer experience without having to take, um, take in the full complexity. Martin believes that amazing experiences are at the heart of our industry and setting up magic moments for your patrons can potentially create ambassadors, build loyalty, for peer to peer marketing and improve employee satisfaction in the organization. And the best part is it only costs a bit of time and effort. Today's webinar will cover the theory, how to design customer moments, and how to identify opportunities, coupled with real life tales of organizations that have worked systematically with moments. Just a reminder if you have any questions for Martin, please feel free to type them in the comment box, and I will be sure to uh, interrupt as we go along so Martin can answer those for you guys. And with that, welcome, Martin, and I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to say good evening. Um, I'm in Denmark in Scandinavia, so um, so it's actually evening here. Um, so uh, yeah, thank you for the introduction. Um, as you said, let's try to make it as interactive as possible. Uh, the webinar is typically a really tough format as it's just me just talking into a, talking to a screen. Um, yeah, so as the introduction said, uh, this is a session that um, I've been doing a few times at conferences. I feel really strongly um, about the customer moments as a, as a concept. Um, I'll go through the presentation and, and hopefully get you, get you on board on, on customer moments and, and why they could potentially be a very, very big asset for a, a an organization, especially in live entertainment sports, um, as we are really just selling experiences, right? Um, so, yeah, it's not that I have a huge background in in customer experience. I've, I've been working um, somewhat in and out of the area for uh, for a number of years, but really got into the whole um, behavioral science side of it. Um, so. It might get a little bit nerdy, but I will try to keep it at a minimum um, to to have you all like just get the concept and hopefully get a little bit of inspiration um, from from the session. So um, yeah, let's just jump on in. And um, as we said in the introduction, feel free to just post questions in the chat. Um, Taylor will jump in and, and try to bring them into into the the presentation as we go give it a little bit of a, a little bit of interaction um, so here we are um, yeah hoping you can uh, see my screen here so as said um, here's a, a presentation on a concept called customer moments and why they might be a huge marketing opportunity for live entertainment and sports organizations. Um, so I guess I, um, this is actually what kind of got me going. Um, I had had a little bit of, um, I had a little bit of interest in the whole customer experience um, side, of, side of live entertainment. And then I came across uh, Nigel Robbins, who was um, at that point the CEO of uh, the SSE Arena in Ireland, and he at a, at a conference, he said, customer moments represent the single biggest opportunity in marketing. And I knew that he and I should probably connect. So this is kind of where the whole, uh, the whole title of the presentation came from. So the background is a little bit saying from, from uh, you can say, business um, business analysis, we know that a lot of organizations spend most of their time and money 
focusing on the low scoring um, the low, low scoring customers. So on a satisfaction like this is a like I, I'm sure you know the, the are aware of the concept of net promoter score. So these are people that are low scoring the 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 likelihood to come back or the likelihood to to uh, to recommend the product. And um, typically, most organizations spend a lot of their time handling complaints, handling um, handling dissatisfied customers. But evidence shows that the impact is actually almost nine times higher if focusing on elevating those that are somewhat positive and try to elevate them to being like full-blown uh, loyal customers and, and, and even ambassadors. And um, back in January, I saw this tweet. Um, it's from... Uh, it's from a guy working at a, at a comedy club in, in the UK and he said, well, here is a thought for the day. Maybe all, all the creativity is being utilized on replying eloquently to audience complaints. And I sort of that resonated with me. And I was like, okay, maybe we have the same issue in this industry. Um, so let's back up a little bit and say, what is, what is a customer moment? So, say this would be an example of a customer moment uh, a couple goes to rome 1996 they come back 20 years later and the con shares in the hotel says it's so great to have you back it was a fantastic wedding i'm so happy to see that you're still together i mean that would be like really a uh, fantastic experience for uh, this couple and it will all be like from the magical mind of the concierge but really something where you, something unexpected happens, they feel uh, recognized and feel appreciated. Another alternative, uh, another example would be, uh, this is from a venue in Norway that we've been working with. Um, the service, uh, the, the activity stream service actually popped up and said, hey, on coming Saturday, you have Alison coming. Uh, she's turning 60 on the night and she bought a single ticket. Um, so they decided to make something of, uh, of that night. And so when Alison came to her seat, there was a small note saying, um, we would like to offer you an upgrade. So here's your new ticket. And um, she found a new ticket for the best seat in the house. Uh, when she sat down, the CEO of the, the, of the concert venue was sitting next to her. He was saying, Thank you for being such a loyal customer. Uh, we hope you have a fantastic evening. Uh, we're so happy you decided to spend your, your birthday with us. Um, here's a recording of tonight's performance, and here are two tickets for a performance later this year. And as you can imagine, really fantastic customer experience, something that Alison um, sent them a, a note afterwards saying this was an amazing night, and. I'm so uh, proud to be um, proud to be uh, coming back to, to the concert house. So, why are these moments effective? Well, we go a little bit back in the behavioral science, so you'll have to excuse me because I'm gonna mention uh, Daniel Kahneman. Um, some of you might know him. He's the kind of like the founding father of behavioral science, having done multiple um, multiple papers, multiple books on what, amongst other things, like what makes people make decisions, what affects people's decision making. And he goes like, everybody's got a system one and a system two. System two is the rational part of our brain, the one that if we say what's 26 times 14, that's the that's the part of the brain that we're activating. And that's the part of the brain that we are typically interacted, uh, interacting with when people are communicating to us, when we see a message somewhere, or when we see um, someone wanting us to buy something. It's, it's typically, hey, if you buy this, you get a 26% discount. And if you buy two, you'll get, enter our loyalty program. And, and it's, and it's this, the, you would say, the rational part of our brain that is being activated. On the other hand, and uh, doesn't it seem like system one has a little bit more fun, I would say so, 
Um, so system one is our feelings, our emotions, um, and this is actually the system that controls a lot of our decisions. So if we interact with system one and activate emotions and feelings, we're mo much more likely to have, um, to have an effect on how people behave. Um, so how do, you, how do you activate system one? Um, one of the things that you can do, and, and the example of both the hotel and also the, uh, the, the woman coming to, to the concert venue, what they're actually doing is breaking the script. So you can say, my, the rational part of my brain has an expected, uh, an expected line of events that is going to happen when going to a show. So I'm going to buy a ticket. I'm going to show up on the day of the event. I'm going to sit down in my seat. I'm going to watch the performance. I'm going to applaud, stand up, go home. Um, and the question you should be asking yourself is, how can you break that script? So a few examples of, of organizations that have broken the script. Um, we'll, yeah, I'm sorry, we'll come back to that after this because we need actually to introduce a second, um, a second element of this is how the human brain um, forms long-term memories. Um, the human brain will will only remember two elements long term. Indeed, the morning after a show, you'll be able to remember a lot of things about that show, but come a, a month down the line, the human brain will only be able to remember two elements. The peak, and that could be a, a high point or a low point, and how it ended. So this is why uh, your favorite band will play your favorite song as the last one of the show, because they know that they're gonna end at a peak, and that's why you go home um, and feeling that it was a brilliant concert, even though the 25 minutes at the middle of it was, were quite uh, boring because they were playing the new songs and you didn't really know them. Um, but they're gonna end on a high note, leaving you with a, uh, a lasting memory that the show was great. I'm not sure that it's because they've read up, uh, read up on a lot of behavioral science, but it's very well founded in, um, in behavioral science. So how can you use this? You can actually use this to design for peaks. Um, so what we're seeing here is the Magic Castle Hotel in LA. By all means, it's a very regular standard hotel. I mean, the rooms aren't amazing. The cleaning isn't fantastic. The, the food isn't amazing. The pool isn't great. It's all just a pretty run-of-the-mill hotel. But they have this. Next to the pool is a popsicle hotline. And what do you think happens when you pick up the popsicle hotline and say, I would like a popsicle. Well, a guy turns up with a popsicle on a tray, handing you a popsicle. Um, do you think that this little lady here in the pool is going to remember whether the cleaning was not so-so or if the bed was a little bit soft or no? She's going to remember only the fact that they went to a hotel and you could pick up a popsicle hotline and a guy would bring you a popsicle. So this is designing for peaks. And if you, if you think, well, does this really work? I, um, I encourage you to go to TripAdvisor and look up the Magic Castle Hotel. They're doing a number of other things, but it, this is something that everyone mentions. Um, I mean, when they're planning the vacation next year, where do you think the kids will wanna go? Back to the popsicle hotline. So. So that's designing for peaks. Here is something, um, here's a theater in the UK. Um, I'm not even sure that they really, um, that they really thought about it in this way, but it, I'm gonna classify it as designing the end. Um, so this was um, the, the managing director of 
of the new Wall Street Theater. Um, she, she, they did a, you know, a very, uh, a very popular show. It was a very well well received, and it was very like down to earth and very something that they wanted to be very interactive with the the crowd. Um, and they had the typical ending planned. Like it's gonna it's gonna end. People are gonna applaud. We're gonna bow and do our thing. And that's going to be the end of the night. Then people are going to go out the door and go home. It's just like, it just doesn't feel right. I mean, I want to do, I want to do something else. Uh, so she said, well, why not have the bar open when the show uh, ends? And why not, um, and why not have the cast uh, circulate uh, and, and mingle uh, with people? So instead of just sending people out the door, you actually have people getting a really memorable end to the night. And um, yeah, and then does it work if you do these things? Well, it actually works because you, you're, you're engaging with people on an emotional level. So people will actually remember you. They will form a relationship to the organization that uh, connected with them on an emotional level. And this is what moves people up the kind of the loyalty ladder, um, going from just someone you know to someone you're talking to, so, to someone who's actually loyal and maybe even to full blown ambassador. And um, today, in this day and age, we, we know that, hey, what happens when we connect with people and they get like surprised or they, they get emotionally engaged with us well the first thing that happens is that they take out their phone take a picture of whatever note you've left them on the seat and they're going to put it on social media and that's a little bit back to why this is such a, a big opportunity in terms of marketing because this is the best marketing you'll ever have as an organization uh, it's because it's not you sending it out it's people um they're gonna send it out their friends are gonna see it i mean if you really connect with someone emotionally i, I mean if you look at if you look at the pretty the, the little note here on the, on the right this is actually from center theater group in in la uh where they they put a little a little booklet on people's uh people's chairs if they were coming back to see a production for the second time put a small booklet on on the seats and i I can't, I don't know if you can see this, but it says, um, we've been like, we've been going to the theater for many, many years and it's a fantastic. It was a fan. You, you made us feel like fat cats and seats and ticket holders. Um, and it's just, you know, I mean, it's a handwritten note. How big can it get, uh, in 2019? So this is kind of the, the, the thing that you trigger doing these things. And if we go a little bit, uh scientific uh on on the effect you can say there are, there are actually three waves the one is you have a direct effect you are affecting uh some people very directly you're interacting with some loyal customers or someone who you're just noticing um and you're as you're saying as i'm saying you're, you're connecting with them on an emotional level that means that they build loyalty, they increase their purchase frequency maybe. Um, so you have a very direct effect. You're connecting with people, it triggers more purchases and thereby more money. And as just mentioned, you also have the indirect effect. So you have people taking out their phones, so sharing on social media, sharing word of, word of mouth. I mean, the best marketing you'll ever have is someone on a Saturday night telling his friends, you won't believe what happened Thursday at the theater. I was coming um, to see the show for the second time and I found this note on the seat with a, like, whatever the story is, that's the best marketing you'll ever have. So again, this triggers more purchases from the friends of the person that you interacted with. And then there's the third one. And this is not to be ignored in any way. I mean, you have a huge internal effect in the company um, because 
if you're a managing director and you do these weekly meetings with the whole organization, um, I'm pretty sure that if you to that meeting you bring a few um, a few of these notes that were on social media or uh, an email you received or a letter you received even, and you read them out loud. This speaks very, very much to like the purpose uh, of this industry. Uh, people typically work in theaters or performing arts venues because they have a pride and they have a sense of purpose on delivering fantastic experiences and yeah, people elevating people's lives. So the internal effect of doing this is, is really speaking to the DNA of most organizations and it'll typically result in the organization wanting to do more of this. So it's a pretty good, it's a good, uh, it's a good circle that you kind of find yourself in. So when you've decided, hey, I would like to do some of this, um, this sounds like something that would be relevant for us. Uh, it sounds like something that we would like to try out. Um, the next thing is like, but who do I target? I can't really set up exceptional customer moments for everyone. Um, that kind of sort of defies all the whole like, concept. Um, so how do you find out who to target? And there are, um, I would say there's a general guideline here. Um, the goal is that you should show me you know me and show me you care. Um, so there are a, different, a few different ways I'm gonna say, well, one very simple way is just to empower your staff. Um, for instance, as I, uh, for instance I, I, and I don't really know if you have Fred and Marche in the US, but it's, uh, it's just like a sandwich, um, sandwich coffee shop in Europe. And um, what they did was they would just to everyone, um, everyone working there would have, uh, would have the right to every week give out a sandwich and two cups of coffee, for instance. Um, so that means that most loyal customers at, at Pret a Marche, they will at some point experience that the that the girl or the guy behind the counter will give them a coffee, saying, "Hey, I'm sorry you got caught in the rain," or "Hey, it's so great to have you here on a, every Friday morning. Um, we're always yeah, happy to serve you coffee today. Today it's on me." Um, so it's just those small things. Um, the image on the right, <coughs> to the right of that is, uh, I think it's a hockey hockey team in Washington. And um, and they are, after the game, they have the staff just go around and, and giving out some free, <coughs> some signed pucks. Uh, so this is a friend's, uh, one of my friend's kid who got uh, a signed puck. And it's obviously, I mean, it's a great trigger. <clears throat> it's a great end to an evening. It's kind of breaking the script. They get to go home with something kind of unique uh, and really triggers them to come back. Um, another way is to go a little bit more methodical. Um, you can go through, you can go through data. Uh, you can search out like, who are the, do I have any loyal, top customers coming, do I have like, do I have some first timers? Do I have someone coming to see the same show for the second time? Um, all these things, or you can use an existing service. Um, and this is, this is a little bit on, on what activity stream does. Um, a little bit of what we do is that we, we enable organizations to do this at scale. I'm just going to give you a few examples here. So activity stream is, uh, a, you can say a data platform that will monitor everything that's going on, uh, everything that's going on in your sales, in your marketing, and in with your customers. So one of the one of the key things of Activision is that we bring you these observations, similarly to your like your timeline on Facebook or your timeline on LinkedIn. Um, we just give you like these observations, saying, "Hey, one of your top twenty customers is attending an event tomorrow." Or, hey, a group of 16 people from Washington will be attending the, the event on Wednesday, and they appear to be first-time visitors. Or, hey, someone is attending a production for the second time. So these are 
just observations of, hey, some of your customers are really uh, standing out and, and might, be, might be those that you should reach out to. Those are the simple ones. Then we go into a little bit more of the advanced ones. We have, hey, someone is now top 20 customer, uh, having spent so-and-so with you over the last 12 months. Or if we connect it to the ticket scanning data, we can say, hey, some of, one of your top customers did a no-show. Um, and I mean, if you reach out the day after and, and reach out to a top customer and say, hey, we missed you yesterday. Is there something we can do? Um, can we offer you? Uh, replacement tickets. Um, I know that this is what Center Theater Group in LA is doing. They will actually have a pretty good, um, pretty good service running the day after the show, uh, looking through ticket scans and making sure that uh, they reach out to loyal customers that didn't show. Um, or here we have a repeat traveler. So, so hey, someone is repeatedly traveling far to come to your venue. Um, this in the industry is known as Martin's mom observation um, because my mom repeatedly travels all over Europe to see uh, Wagner operas. Um, so I'm kind of putting this out there and it, it is the whole observation type was built on, on that behavior uh, saying, well, if you're a big opera house and you have someone who is every year traveling, you can say, from Canada to Miami to experience an, an opera, um, there's actually, there's a huge potential in recognizing these people because they have a very strong affinity with you as a venue. Um, so if you recognize them and you show them that you care, you're going to unlock a fantastic, like, strong affiliation and, and, and potentially bring them to be full-blown ambassadors of your venue. So it's a great, it's a great emotion and it's a great affiliation to tap into. If we go into the like, kind of very complex ones, um, one is an observation that things are not happening. Uh, so this is an observation that someone is not buying uh, tickets anymore. Uh, so someone who has previously bought regularly and would be considered a high value customer, but now hasn't bought anything for 12 months. Again, this is very hard to see in like standard reporting, uh, but it's a very key moment to have uh, to interact with with people, um, saying, "Hey, is something something going on? We really miss you. Is there something we can do to to um, to have you back?" Well, I mean, it can't just be that they had twins uh, and are not really going out for a few years, but just showing that you care and that you've noticed that they're not coming um, can be quite powerful. There's one on uh, fundraising as well. Hey, uh, one of your large donors is not following the donation pattern. Or you have like returning high value customers. So, so someone who was previously a high, um, high value, uh, very regular attendee, hasn't been to an event for 14 months, but is coming back on Friday. Again, here's a like, is a behavior that you want to trigger. Um, you want to trigger them to go back to their previous behavior. So if they come back after 14 months and find a note on their seat saying, "Hey, Karen, we're so happy to have you back." It doesn't. It doesn't need to say anything else. It's just clean and simple. Um, the the likelihood that Karen is going to fall fall back into her uh, previous pattern is is much higher. So, yeah, so now we've sort of touched on why you want to do this, um, how to figure out who to do this to. Um, so I'm just going to, a few comments on like, how do you do this? So I would say the key thing here is to make it personal. Um, a few examples would be, hey, leave them a note on the seat, preferably handwritten. Um, it could be send them a voucher. It could be invite them to something special like a pre-sale or meet the cast or behind the scenes or give them a seat upgrade or just the simple just reaching out, emailing them, calling them, greeting them. It doesn't really have to be, you don't have to splash out. It's not, it's not about leaving champagne bottles in the seats or sending them 
uh, huge discounts or additional tickets. It's all about connecting with people on an emotional level. And I would say in, in 2019, the, the biggest, the biggest uh, gesture you can make is actually giving people a little bit of your time. So that's why I'm saying a handwritten note is actually just is, stands out in 2019. Um, but generally, best advice is involve the organization um, because no one knows you better. No one knows your DNA better. And how you want to act on customer moments it might be very, very different if you're a comedy club from if you're an opera house or if you're a basketball club. Um, so my best advice is involve the organization. Um, say, hey, we want to do this whenever we have, I don't know, one of our top customers come. What, what should we do? And I promise you those are going to be two really, really fun hours. It's, yeah, these workshops, absolutely love them. Um, and people just go away from them, just energized and yeah, so a lot of fun. Um, and then a, a little bit of a, a little bit of a story here. Um, and then that is to have you consider the delivery. So a little story uh, that goes on behavioral science as well. This was um, a restaurant, I think uh, a few restaurants and they did this experiment. Uh, they said, okay, well, when we're giving people the, the bill for the evening, we let's say that the the level of tips let's call it start that at, at 100 um then they decided to add a mint so when they when they handed in uh when they left the bill on the table they would leave a, a breath mint with it so tips went up four percent then they said okay well how about we leave two minutes with the bill um that meant the tips went up actually 11%. Then they did, uh, then they left one mint. And as the waiter was walking away from the table, he stopped, turned around and said, Hey, for you special people, it's been a wonderful evening. Thank you so much. Here's the second mint. And he put that on the tray as well. And tips for those tables went up 24%. So it's just to say, I mean, it's not that they're, they're not giving anything more than in like they, they were before. They're just delivering it in a very special way, sort of emphasizing the connection with people. So, uh, so consider that as well, if you can make that somewhat special. So if this is something that you want to do, um, and I really encourage you all to do it because it's fun and it pays off and it's, yeah, it's just, it builds loyalty. So I would say, if you want to do this, start small, just say, Hey, well, no one wants a big customer moment program rollout. So just have the team kind of do one per week, learn from it. Um, and I would say, if you, if you have to find the time to do this, I would take it away from answering complaints uh, because that doesn't really affect your business that much anyway. Um, uh, a very tongue in cheek, eloquent response to a complaint. Well, it might satisfy you a little bit. It might satisfy your customer a little bit, but the customer's not come, gonna come back anyway. So um, second advice, go for the money makers. Like I would definitely map your top 20 customers. I'm sure there's a, I'm sure there's a report in Ticket Force that will show you your top customers over time. Um, so make sure that you know them, make sure that you know when they're coming and um, well, and just uh, consider what can you do for these people the next time they come. Um, and if, I mean, if that, if you're successful in that, I would say the next up would be large groups from far away. I mean, as I showed you the, the observation with a large group of people coming from Washington and they appear to be first time bookers, it's typically a special occasion. Uh, so there's, there's something at stake uh, for the organizer. Uh, so if you can sort of 
accommodate that uh, that nervousness uh, for the organizer. He's he may be responsible for his like his mother's 75th birthday and their large group coming and it was always her wish to see I don't know a play in Miami and um, if you can kind of tap into that and say well do you know the venue is this something we can do it's both going to be a very fantastic customer experience but if you're a little bit a little bit smart about it it's also going to sell you uh, it's also going to going to be a sale of I don't know a wine uh, a glass of wine or um, or something and as I said just before um, if you want to get started just involve the organization they will most likely love it and with that I'm gonna say that was the background on customer moments um, typically I've we did this presentation um, back in at Intix, uh, the conference in um, the conference in uh, what was it? It was uh, yeah, back in January. Um, I think it was, it was in Texas. Exactly, and it was yeah. um, it was fantastic fun. And I mean, there were people going home from directly from that presentation and, and just starting out. And we've seen we've seen some fantastic stories. We've seen some fantastic reactions. Um, so, yeah, it's I think it's um, it is extremely powerful and um, and something that a lot of organizations should should really try out. Martin, do you have a do you have a favorite moment personally? One that you've done that you thought really stood out, or just one that was fun for you to do? Well. Um, I kind of like the well. Some of the panelists that I work with for the the Intix presentation, I think some of them were really good. Um, like the Center Theater Group, as I said, they 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 just noticed that hey, for this um, performance called Fun Home, they were seeing a lot of people come back um, for like to see the show for a second time, and they and then they had like a lot of leftover booklets. Um, so I mean, the show is is based on on this um, this graphic novel. So so they decided to leave that on the seats of people, and um, and that really just connected with people. And it was a, uh, include a handwritten note from from the director and, and so on. And and it's just I mean, some of the reactions that they saw from that was just outstanding. Um, but then I kind of also like just when people try it out for the first time. Um, so we had someone uh, uh, coming to, to see the, the presentation at Intix and she was from the UK. She went straight home and, um, and just tried it out. And as she said, I mean, she didn't have a big team of people. She didn't have any money to spend, but it was just like, she noticed someone coming back after having not been to the theater for a long time and she decided to make something of it. And um, so when this person arrived, she just, left them uh left uh him uh, like a handwritten note and a and a free program and uh so well we're happy to have you back and that person like immediately went to his seat found found the note and went straight back to the box office and bought tickets for all shows for the remainder of the year and i think that's just for me that that sort of in, just catches the whole point of like why you want to do this I think that's the best part too is that it doesn't it doesn't have to cost any money. Like you can you and I, I don't know about you, but I love getting handwritten notes. I think it's so powerful and it's something that nobody does anymore. So when you do receive something like that, you know that there was thought that was put into that or you know, someone actually had to like sit down and physically like write it out for you, which I think is, is really cool and something that I think we lose a lot this day and age with social media and online. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, you can you can go to a you go to a hotel, and if if they know it's your birthday, they will probably leave you a like a, a pre-printed card and a, and a glass of wine. Um, yeah. And I would say, even those, I mean, we all know that it's something that they do pretty standardized, and it's something that is just if this happens, we do this. Um, but still, I mean. People kind of connect with it. Um, yeah. So, I mean, 
there's you're not gonna you're not gonna make anyone angry so it's like this typically just makes people smile and um yeah and that is just extremely powerful it is it's super yeah. impactful yeah so um yeah so I'd say, I'd say those are kind of i'm still waiting for an opera house in in europe to to connect with my mom um i'm sure that <laughs> would, i'm sure that's going to pay pay off handsomely because it, they what they don't know is that they would take money out of all the other opera houses and and build a much stronger royalty <laughs> so so I'm, i kind of do this presentation uh for all opera houses around europe and i'm just waiting for one of them to kind of catch on but there you go <laughs> One of them to be like, oh hey, maybe we should look up this this lady, find out where what she's about. And um, and you don't, I mean, you don't even have, you don't necessarily have to be a, a theater or performing arts or sports clubs. It, I mean, yeah, I'm not. I mean, we we typically try to do this ourselves. I mean, we, when we have new clients, we after like after having them onboarded and, and signed up, we will send them a little something. And a handwritten note um, might be from me, might be from the account manager who who closed the deal, um, and just to say, I mean, welcome. And again, you know, you know how you get these if you order something online, and and the package comes with a little bit of with a little note or a little extra something. Um, it might be that they do it all the time, but it, it still feels still feels kind of nice. Oh yeah, I I mean I just I ordered something um from a little small uh clothing company in the United States a few weeks ago and I got it in the mail the other day and there was a sticker inside and I mean I know it didn't it wasn't anything extra for them, you know, they caught their baby like ten cents to print and all it took them was throwing it in the bag, but it was something that stood out to me as a consumer. So I it, it definitely resonates in a lot of different areas, I think. So it does. Um, yeah. I'm sure it does. And it, it's, you can say it, it all comes down to this breaking the script. I mean, are you, <clears throat> are you just sending people something that's what they expect? Or are you doing just something like, I mean, you could, you could draw like a, a small heart outside the, on, on the outside of the box, something, it's just something that, you know, connects with people and, and break their expectations a little bit. So, yeah. And now, you, I mean, after this presentation, you'll you'll know that it's it's actually deeply rooted in behavioral <laughs> science, like why Very. why we connect with it. Um, so uh, yeah, so all the more reason to to get going. Of course, I couldn't agree more with you. Uh, well, thank you so much, Martin, for taking time out of your evening. I know it's it's late there for you. Um, but we, we really, really appreciate it. And I know our clients do too, and we're really excited to get started, uh, with you guys. And we're excited to give activity stream to our clients and have them start using it and utilizing customer moments. Oh, that would be fantastic. So yeah, All great. Right. And, uh, and if, yeah, if anyone wants to get them a little bit more of a one-to-one -one session, uh, just have them reach out and, uh, we'll be happy to, to set it up. Yeah, anybody, anybody listening or on right now, um, if you have any questions that come up a little later or if you just want to talk to Martin a little bit more one-on-one, -on -one, go ahead and reach out to the team at TicketForce.com and we'll, uh, we'll get you in contact with Martin. Um, yeah, I think that's Fantastic. it. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me. It's uh, been a pleasure. Uh, it's uh, something I feel quite strongly about, so I'm always happy to, uh, to spread the word. Yeah, we we are very lucky to have caught you uh, in your in your evening. So why don't you go on and go to bed? I know it's like ten o'clock for you. It's a little late. Yeah, no problem. Um, so fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you, Martin. Thanks, everybody. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.